So I founded Green Gym with my wife um, nearly 14 years ago in, in 2011 um, after more than two decades of working in the real estate private equity business. And the Green Gen came about out of a frustration that in the real estate business, we never thought about expenses, we never thought about margins. And when the GFC came along and the top lines and revenues collapsed, we were faced with all these expenses, particularly around energy, um, that no one ever thought were controllable. No one knew how to do it. And we went out to essentially hire someone to help us think about it. Um, but we couldn't find what we wanted. We mostly found a lot of consulting firms that wanted to get paid to tell us what to do, but not actually do it. And we felt there was simply a different way, a better way to go about it. And so we formed GreenGen to really help firms initially think about utilities, and that's grown to repairs and maintenance, insurance, uh, lots of other categories of spend. Uh, but to think about how to drive a financial outcome, but also a climate outcome at the same time. This idea that you could do both, that you could drive success around sustainability and net zero, uh, but at the same time do it in a way that actually increased the value of the assets and shifted the thinking from how much will this cost, actually how much value does it create. We fast forward to today, we are a global firm um, operations in APAC, and now India, uh, Europe, and North America, a team that's more than 60% engineers, so very quantitative, very outcome-oriented, um, and one of the few firms, I think, that has the ability to both think about developing strategy, mm -hmm. but actually execution of the strategy. Uh, and I think the world has shifted a great deal from this idea that, do you know what to do, to are you actually doing it? We do a couple of things. Uh, one, we're end-to-end. -end. So we help people not only develop the strategy, but we actually help them execute the strategy. I think the other thing is that we understand energy very well, but we understand it in a context of real estate capital markets and technology. It's not enough to simply say you can make the building better. You need to be able to quantify what that means. You need to be able to think about how um, expenses get reimbursed, um, who pays the cost, who gets the benefit, how to align them. You need to work quickly because so many of the groups we work with are not long-term owners and investors, but they're going to own it for a period of time and they need the work done very quickly. Uh, and so I think bringing the real estate perspective, the one that I had from the first part of my career, has been really valuable. We know what our clients want. We know what matters to them. They're really focused on increasing the value of the assets, increasing their fees, increasing their profit participation. The other thing um, that's really important is access to capital markets. Investors increasingly, sovereign wealth funds, insurance, pension funds, are becoming much more demanding about how their capital is being used and they want to see it used in a climate aligned or climate friendly way. And so having an ESG strategy that's embedded in every part of their business um, to give them better access to capital markets, not only equity but also in the debt capital markets, um, is increasingly important. We actually don't think they're in conflict. Um, I think there's a lot of people who think you have to basically be focused on one or the other. A lot of big companies do believe this. Well, you know, and so much of our work is really about changing the conversation from how much is this going to cost to how much value is it going to create. And, and I'll, I'll pose a riddle. So if we ask you to uh, invest, you know, 10 million uh, rupee, you know, into a building to upgrade it, and when you're all said and done, that will lower you know, the operating costs, the utility costs by a million rupee. And the building's valued at five caps, so a 20 multiple. So you invest 10. When you're all done, the building you know, saves a million and it's actually worth 20 million. Did it cost you 10 million? Or did you actually get paid the net 10 million to do the work? Um, and, but not everyone thinks like that. And that's, I think, the conundrum that we're facing is how people are, are thinking about this. You know, we know because we've done this from the very beginning and this is our background and experience, we know that if you design it from the outset to achieve both a financial outcome and a climate outcome, you can achieve both. The challenge is when you sort of add something late in the process. You know, you're building a building, it's almost ready to be occupied, say, oh, we want to change the, the cooling. You know, the systems largely exist already. It's very hard to do. If you do it when it's being designed and you do it when it's being constructed, it's not challenging. 
I think of it as an opportunity more than anything else. Um, we know that the work we do creates value. We know it also has a positive impact on uh, greenhouse gases, uh, helping people and firms transition to a low carbon or no carbon world. We know that. Uh, our experience tells us that. Um, the work we do is primarily with investors, um, largely because that's the background that I have and my wife has you know, when we founded this firm. Um, but increasingly, we're able to translate that experience into occupiers. Uh, and there's a big difference between uh, investors and occupiers. Uh, occupiers, it's their employees, they're long-term committed to the space. Investors typically are you know, having, it's a third party that's occupying the space, and they're a short-term owner, so they want to drive as much value as, as they can. You know, nobody says they want bad air quality or bad lighting or they want, you know, a building to operate poorly. What they really do is they really need help sort of translating from the aspiration, the idea of wanting a better building to actually, you know, the reality. So capital is not an issue. There's lots of capital in the world, but capital and banks and financial institutions, they finance projects. Most people start with an idea. And I think it's a firm like ours that's able to translate the idea, the aspiration from one side into a project that has cash flows, savings, costs um, that someone will finance and put money against. So when you and your wife first started uh, Green Gen, who apart from like having each other's uh, vision in mind were able to back your idea? Who were the initial people who were helping you to build this company? Um, when we founded the company, we were backed by four groups, um, all um, U.S.-based family offices that have experience uh, in real estate. You know, I think it's, an, I think it's a great question. Um, what I find with a lot of entrepreneurs is what is missing is they don't really know the problem they're solving, and they don't know who they're selling to. They create something, but they're not certain that the world needs their thing. Um, we've seen people say, because we also have a, a part of the business that invests and supports entrepreneurs um, in the prop tech and climate tech space, but they often don't know the problem they're trying to solve. Um, they've invented something. They'll say, we're the only one doing it. It's like, I know that you're, I know 20 other people who are trying to address the same problem, but they also don't understand who they're selling to. They're trying to sell software as a ser or hardware as a service. No one wants to buy hardware as a service. They want to buy it. Uh, they want to buy software as a service. People don't understand why, um, how leases work, you know, how real estate works, how private equity works. And understanding it and really my background coming from it, my wife's coming from it, was one of the keys to our success because we understood um, really well what mattered to our clients.